So it, 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 it's an assignment. And when you ask that, um, what is the role of the society? Yes, society produces leaders. And leaders should structure the society in the direction of development. I keep saying it. You talk about the National Assembly, for instance, Section 4 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999, as amended, says the National Assembly shall make laws for the peace, orderliness, and good uh, government in the country. And that's why uh, we must bring in now the rule of the judiciary, too, in this case of joint accounts of the state and local government. government. You can see now that the federal government went to the Supreme Court and constitutionally speaking, when there is a dispute between states or between states and federal government, mm. the Supreme Court is the court of first jurisdiction and final jurisdiction. And now a decision has been taken to streamline that matter that has been on for a long time. You can imagine that that matter started from high court. Maybe in another 18 years, we are still on it. Because since 1963, when we became a republic, Supreme Court remains the highest court in the land. So once a decision is taken there, it is taken. That's right. So these are issues. We should go back to purpose. Why do we have these institutions? We have separations of power. And the judiciary has a strong role to play. And I agree with that. So we must do everything to cleanse the system and right. restore the confidence that people have. In fact, even the big players in the judiciary, uh, alluding to the fact that there may be serious corruption going on. So this is a point, a, what we call a breaking point. So there is, is, is time for repentance and to look inwards. But having said all that, perhaps if you don't have some scapegoats, we may not effectively mm -hmm. attend to that crucial need. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, picking it up from what uh, the CGA said about... Uh, and that it will be focusing on some judges who have, you know, fallen short of uh, this order. And let's talk about the welfare of the lawyers who even themselves present these evidences before the judge and how prone they are to, you know, uh, corruption and other vices in the society. What's the MBA doing? Uh, we understand that the economy is not quite uh, favorable and, you know, uh, there may be some situations of, you know, being tempted to, you know, Sharp go against the, the principles and all. But what's the association doing to ensure the welfare of lawyers? That uh, is just my first question. And my second question is, uh, while we're also blaming the economy, we also have lawyers who are well-to-do and are still, you know, uh, being used as tools. You see when uh, politicians go to court with several senior advocates, and that's enough to scare the opponent see, <laughs> in winning the case already. And so when you come into court with about 10 SCNs and I have just one, what am I going to say <laughs> against 10 of them? Yeah, but, I mean, it's played out during the last election strike when there were about 84 senior that's advocates right. of Nigeria and mm. many lawyers, and it did not in any way Influence the decision, the decision because according to section 131 of the evidence act 2011 when you you know present facts when you are alleging you have the burden of proof we call it onus of proof to establish your case so it's not just coming in the regalia and <laughs> 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 do i agree with you that some laymen like you say maybe but, but in law you can have as many advocate or counsels as as much as as you can if you can afford it why not? But well, I mentioned earlier, it takes two to tango. And that's why I am respectfully advising the uh, National Judicial Council, headed by the CJN, who may be on his way out by a way of retirement or so, that you need to go beyond focusing on the judges. Mm. You also need to focus on the lawyers. It takes the bar and the bench, the bench yeah. to complement the judicial processes. And let me give kudos to Justice Kaim of the National Industrial Court. You know, you, you need to appear before that justice to know that some justices are brilliant and they know what they are doing. Justice Kaim will tell you, if this is what you are coming to do in my court, mm. no way. You cannot call me and waste my time. Go to the library, study. So mm. you are expected, even though you were prompted from the bar mm. to the bench, you are expected to be above the bar. And justice 
delayed, like some say. It's justice denied. So we have a lot to do. We need to talk about the infrastructure. We need to talk about everything. And recently, there's a bill before the National Assembly upgrading the pay and the allowances of judicial officers by 300%. That's right. Even while NLC is still battling between 62,000 Naira and 250,000 Naira. And so I quite agree, and we have been here to discuss that, that judicial officers should be comfortable to focus on what they are doing. But having said that, on the scale of integrity, is it really about the comfort we talk about? Mm. You know, and at the macro level, we have a dependent economy. Where, for instance, if you have a judge in a family, he may be paying the school fees mm -hmm. of about 17 members of that family. So right. we have a lot to do as a nation. Compared with a nation like Switzerland, where the interest rate is about 1.75%, and we are quarreling about the 30, about 28, 30% <laughs> in Nigeria, where life is structured in a way that you can stand on your own without having to put pressure on one uncle or, or, or whatever. So we have a lot to do as a society. That's right. So and that's why some legislatures will come out to tell you uh, you are accusing us of earning so much money. Do you know how much we say when we go to our constituency? Mm. Paying house rents, paying hospital bills, paying this one, doing the ceremony for these people, which is sacrosanct. Mm. That's why you must empower the people. Sheikh Zaid, the founding father of the modern UAE, said, Wealth is not money, but empowering people, developing people. That's right. So b before we call it a wrap on this conversation, if you look at um, uh, the new national anthem, uh, which is expect uh, Nigerians are expected to internalize, uh, the last stanza where it says, help us build a nation where no man is oppressed, and so with peace and plenty, Nigeria may be blessed. So I guess that actually also speaks directly to the judiciary, because when you are ensuring that someone or a Nigerian who is oppressed is given you know, justice, justice is delivered in certain cases, is there a way that you, is that, is that kind of advice that you would like to give your, your colleagues you know, in, in the judiciary uh, to think, internalize, not just recite, internalize the content of the national anthem? Does this also speak to the judiciary, do you think? It speaks to everyone. Is national anthem, and it covers all citizens, whether you are being led or you are leading. Well, let me say this. The Word of God says righteousness exalts a nation. You may have the best sounding anthem in the whole universe. Mm. If your heart is not right, you go nowhere. You see, and that is what we are saying. Yeah. And that is what I, I mentioned under the case of image and reputation. Mm. Who are we as a people? How do we conduct business? Yeah. You see, so when you talk about oppression, it's not an animal coming to oppress the people. That's right. It's a matter of people oppressing people. Yeah. And we all know which should guide us according to section 14, subsection 2, that the primary purpose of government is the security and the welfare of the citizens. And we are all involved in this, whether it's the judiciary, the legislative, and the executive arm. So, if we all come to the point where we realize that you are only entitled to your need and you don't subdue the society by your greed, then we have a better society. And let me say this. I hope the stakeholders in yeah. the leadership arena are monitoring what is going on in Kenya, mm. talking about responsive governance mm. and the fact that the tenets of democracy have not changed. It's the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. So whether you, if you are leading today, you leave office someday. It's only God that won't leave office. So you are coming back to that society. So what kind of society are you going to help us build? So whether in the judiciary, legislative, and business environment, and things like that, we must put in our best. And a society that allows lawlessness That's right. may never develop. So uh, let me go back to where we started, the famous saying of Lord Heward, mm. that justice should not only be done, mm. but clearly seen to, to have, have been, been done. done. That's right. Not just